Matthew chapter 3, Romans chapter 6, and tonight I want to try and answer three questions about water baptism. Three questions about water baptism. Number one, what is water baptism? Right, what is water baptism? Number two, why you should be water baptized? And number three, how is water baptism significant? So those three things I want to endeavor to answer tonight. And so I want to start off by saying water baptism is a picture And it's a pattern that we see in Scripture of God providing salvation for his people by taking them through the waters. We see it played out again and again throughout the Old Testament, culminating in the life of Jesus and into the book of Acts and early Christianity. In Genesis chapter 1, we see the work of water baptism begin with multiple acts of separating. We talked about this morning, God right, created the light, and then he separated the light from the darkness. And then out of the chaotic waters, he caused the land to come up. He separated the light from darkness, the waters above the heavens from the waters below, the seas from the dry ground where the waters would uh, gather together. Eden emerges from those waters, bringing the place of life up from these waters, and God brings humanity into that new creation. All right, we see that in Genesis, that there is a distinction between the water and what God is doing, that the, what, the, what the water represents and what God is bringing out of the water. Do you see it? And Noah is a picture of water baptism. Noah and his family are saved through the waters and step onto dry land and begin a new creation, humanity 2.0. Noah becomes a, like a second Adam. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 20, it says, Those who disobeyed God long ago, um, when God had patiently waited while Noah was building his boat, only eight people were saved from the drowning in that terrible flood. And that water is a picture of baptism. That baptism now saves you, not by removing dirt from your body, but as a response to God from a clean conscience. It is effective because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So we see water baptism is, we see types and shadows of it in the Old Testament. What happened on the ark and the flooding of the world was a picture of water baptism. How God brought salvation to Noah and to his family by taking them through those Troubled waters. Probably the best picture in the Old Testament for water baptism is the Exodus story. In the life of Moses, God saves his chosen people from Egypt by leading them through the waters of the Red Sea and on to the dry land. That's Exodus 14, 16. Israelites are delivered from slavery and from death by going through the waters and then on to Mount Sinai where they invite, where they are invited to become God's people and God's representative to the nations. That God, through that moment, would fulfill the blessing and the promise that he made to Abraham that from your seed all the nations of the world would be blessed. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. Paul's writing, I don't want you to forget, dear brothers and sisters, how our ancestors in the wilderness long ago, all of them were guided by a cloud that moved ahead of them. All of them walked through the sea and onto dry dry ground. In the cloud and in the sea, all of them were baptized as followers of Moses. So we see in the Exodus story them, God's people, imagine it, they're on the The bank of the Red Sea, they go down into the waters. They go down. They're they're leaving Egypt. They're leaving that place of slavery. They go down into the waters. And then they come up out of the waters as God's people. No longer slaves. No longer in bondage. And the enemy that was trying to chase them down goes into those waters and and dies in those waters. But God brings salvation to Israel through the waters. So the new work that Christ is doing on the inside of us when we say yes to Jesus, God God puts his spirit on the inside of us. He gives us a new heart. We are a new creation. We are, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. 
And so water baptism is that picture that we've gone down into those waters. But we're coming up out of those waters, a new creation, living from that new life that God has given to each and every one of us, right? You see it continue in the Old Testament while Joshua is leading Israel. So Moses leads them out of Egypt. Joshua leads them into the promised land. And lo and behold, there's another body of water that the people of Israel cross through. God, through, through Joshua, brings the people out of the wilderness, once again crossing through the Jordan River, into the place that he has prepared, the promised land. Okay? And then finally, we'll get to Matthew chapter 3, and we hear about this crazy, crazy, long-haired, wild man named John the Baptist. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 through 6, In those days John the Baptist came in the Judean wilderness. He began preaching. And his message was this, Repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, He is a voice shouting in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. And people from Jerusalem... And Judea and all over the Jordan Valley went to see and hear John, and they confessed their sins, and he baptized them in the Jordan River. John is proclaiming the coming of the Messiah. What's interesting about John's baptism is the only baptism that was widely known or or talked about would be a proselyte baptism. And what, what that is would be Taking somebody that is not of Jewish descent, so a a Gentile, making him study under the law for, I think it was like 10 years. And then if you were a male, you had to go through a minor surgical procedure. But it's only minor if you're a male. Huh? And then you had to be water baptized, and you would never be considered... And an an Israelite, but you would not be considered an alien. You wouldn't be considered an an enemy. So it was a a proselyte baptism. But John shows up, and he's not baptizing Gentiles into the nation of Israel. He's baptizing Jews. He's baptizing Jews unto this new way, this new kingdom that has come. He is baptizing people to prepare their hearts for the coming of the Messiah. And then Jesus in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13, when Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, John tried to talk him out of it, saying, I'm the one that needs to be baptized by you. Why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After this, uh, excuse me, after his baptism, Jesus came up out of the waters. The heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my Son who brings me great joy. So we see from the Old Testament, from page 1 on your Bible, in the life of Noah, in the life of Moses, in the life of Joshua, in the life of John the Baptist preparing the nation, and in the life of Jesus, we see this picture of water baptism, and we can see the significance of it. So water baptism, if you're taking notes, this is going to be a longer definition. But this is what it means. The meaning of water baptism is about participating in this biblical pattern of going through the waters of death and following Jesus out the other side into a new creation. I'm going to say it again. Water baptism is about participating in this biblical pattern from page one. About going through the waters or going down into the waters or going going into that watery grave is another way you could say it. And following Jesus out the other side into the newness of life, into a new creation. All right? Romans chapter 6, I want want to read just one more block of scripture and then um, 
and then we'll move on. Romans chapter 6, starting in verse 3. Paul's writing, he says, Have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? I love this. For we died and we were buried with Christ in baptism. And as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also live new lives. Since we have been united with him in his death, we will also be raised to new life as he was. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves to sin. I want to just say this emphatically, very quickly. Verse 6, one more time. And we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin. When you said yes to Jesus, God did a brand new work in your heart. The power of sin was broken in your life. Anything that this world would try and label or identify you as, whether it be... Whether it pertains to your behavior, that power, that sin, that bondage, that stronghold was broken when you said yes to Jesus. Listen to me. It's either he did a new work or he did not. Either your old man and your old life was crucified on the cross and it died there or it did not. There is no halfway, oh, I've still got this power of sin still living on the inside of me. No, you do not. God did a brand new work. Sin was crucified on the cross when we identified with Jesus. You see it? Sin's power is broken in your life. You do not want to sin. You want to live for God. You want to follow the things of God. You want to be obedient to God because He gave you a new identity. Sin's power was broken. Right? We identified with him in his death. Okay, I'm just reading the Bible. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead. And he will never die again. Can I get a good amen, somebody? Look at this Bible. You just got to read this thing. You know what I'm saying? Like... Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you should also, he's talking to us. You should also be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Man, I love the Bible. It's a good book. It's a Tove book. It's a Tove book. Baptism in the Bible expresses an identification with Christ's death, resurrection. That the old self was, the old self was crucified with Christ through the waters of death. And now followers of Jesus have been raised to new life. Right? You know what's interesting? Um, if you go to the Middle East and you go to a... Um, a nation who, whose God is not Yahweh, right? If you see a, a, a Muslim being water baptized, you know what is happening. They are denouncing a way of life. You know what I mean? Like, I know that we're, we're Americans, and so sometimes we don't always see the significance, but what we were saying when we go through these waters, when we're saying when we get baptized, we are saying, I now identify with Christ. I do not identify with uh, this other religion. I do not identify with this other world system. I identify with Jesus. So let me give you a couple reasons why you should be water baptized. Why you should be not water baptized is because God announces that Jesus is his son who will rescue the world from the, tr from the chaos 
of humanity and the violence by going through the waters of death, out the other side. And this is why baptism becomes such a big deal in the book of Acts. They're like, you, you saved, you saved, you sure? We'll baptize you right now. Right? Why you should be water baptized? Number one, I think you should be water baptized to follow in Jesus' example. You should follow in Jesus' example. Number two, you should be water baptized because it is obedience to his great commission. Matthew 28. It is obedience to his commandments. And then number three, water baptism is you should get water baptized because you are going public in your faith. We like to say it like this. Water baptism is the wedding band of Christianity. It's the wedding band of Christianity. It, I don't need this ring to be married. I'm married. I know I was there. This ring does not make me married. This ring lets all the girls know, can't have it. That's right. Right? Water baptism is, is, is a public confession of an inward Decision. And I just want to say it one more time. Look at this. The same way Jesus went into the grave. And then on the third day, he walked out of that grave. And he overcame death, hell, and the grave. He went down, and the enemy thought that he had won. Death thought it had won. But on the third day, he was resurrected. And when he was resurrected, he was not resurrected a bloody, beat-up Savior. He was resurrected as a new creation. And he was in his glorified body. And then he ascended to the right hand of the Father. So when we identify with Jesus in water baptism, when you say yes to Jesus... The old man, the old life, the old way is being nailed to the cross. But then you identify with Jesus by going into the under the water. You go into the grave. You allow yourself to, to be buried by the water. The same way Jesus went down into the earth, we go down under the water. We were buried with him in baptism. Since power in our life is broken, death has no more victory. The power of sin has been broken. You go under the water. And in the same way, on the third day, Jesus walked out of the earth. He walked out of of that grave, the resurrected, glorified Savior. You come up out of these waters, raise, you overcome death. You overcome, you died in this water. But then the same way Jesus was resurrected, you are identifying with that resurrection power that lives on the inside of you. You come up, you go under the water, and dead, the old life is dead. It's on the cross. But you're coming up out of that water, resurrected in the power of Christ. Letting everyone know that I have decided to follow Jesus. I identify with Christ. He is my Savior. This is the work that he's done. This is why it is so powerful when someone goes under these troubling waters. And then they come up. And they say, I belong to Jesus. It is a public confession of an inward decision. 
It is letting every principality and demon and devil know that you belong to Jesus. That I have decided to follow Jesus. That is why I love water baptism. 